Uh, good morning. Um, I'm Brian Pelham. Um, I'm Director of Product Management uh, with Palo Alto Networks. Um, and uh, together with Jamin, uh, my colleague here, uh, we're going to be uh, talking about micro-segmentation. Um, and uh, we'll start off with just a quick overview of micro-segmentation, uh, uh, and then we'll get into approaches and best practices. But I wanted to start with just a quick uh, show of hands uh, in these three different areas so you can look at the three choices, decide which bucket you fall into. Um, and then I'm going to ask. So first, who here has actually uh, implemented microsegmentation in their environment? Big show of hands. Okay, so maybe 15% or so. Okay, how many want to implement it, but you're still trying to figure it out? Not quite sure how to do it. Maybe you're experimenting in the lab. Okay, most of you. Um, how many of you keep hearing the term microsegmentation, but you really don't know what it's all about, and you're here to learn more? A few of you, okay, actually more than, uh, more than a few, okay. So um, as I mentioned, we're gonna talk about why microsegmentation first. Um, so you know, just from a, a security best practices and a zero trust architecture, why it makes sense. Uh, I'm gonna cover that section and then Jamin's gonna talk about the different approaches to doing microsegmentation, as well as some of the best practices and things that we've learned uh, over the years in talking and working with our customers. So let's start off with why. Uh, microsegmentation. So if you were in the keynote or the general session yesterday uh, where they did the, the blue team, red team demo, uh, they kept mentioning the word lateral movement. Uh, and microsegmentation at its heart is really about preventing lateral movement. So it's an all too familiar story here. You've got some malicious um, person, they want access into your environment. Uh, maybe they go in through a vendor portal, maybe they're sending phishing emails. Somehow, some way they find an open door or window into your environment, okay? Um, so in this example here, it's a vendor portal. Uh, they managed to find credentials to get access into the vendor portal. The vendor portal isn't really all that interesting to them, um, but they use that as the doorway in, uh, the entry point into uh, the computing environment. And then they use the network to move laterally to find other things of interest. So you know, they start poking around, do port scans, um, you know, uh, brute password attacks, whatever they do, uh, and they find different assets to get access to. So in this case, uh, the DC server environment. Again, maybe it's not something uh, interesting that they're able to hack into, um, but they use this as a way to move around inside of the environment until finally they stumble upon something that is of interest. In this example, uh, a point of sale system. Uh, from there, uh, once they've been able to compromise that, they can then exfiltrate uh, data out of that. All of this depended upon um, the ability to move laterally inside of the network. So how does microsegmentation micro segmentation help with this? Microsegmentation fundamentally is about preventing that lateral movement. Okay, so in this case here, why would the vendor portal ever need access into the DC servers? Why would all those DC servers need access into the point of sale system? If you can start locking down and preventing the lateral movement, uh, you can then do a whole lot better job of securing uh, your computing environment. Okay, so let me make it a little bit more real for the audience here. Um, so pretend like this is your data center, okay? And then I need, I need volunteers. So those of you who thought you were just gonna sleep through this session, uh, not the case. So I need a, a volunteer from that back corner over there. Someone raise your hand. It won't be difficult, I promise. Okay, can you stand up for me, sir? All right, and then I need someone over here in the front left to stand up, uh, volunteer. Awesome, thank you so much. Can you just say hello to him? And can you say hi, hi back? Okay, awesome. So in here we have zero segmentation, right? It's a big room, anyone can talk to anybody. Anyone can walk around, introduce themselves, say hello. Um, but if I now put in like a wall right here, okay, right where this aisleway is here, and maybe down this aisleway over there, you would no longer be able to communicate with him. Okay, you can still talk to all those people in your section, and you can still talk to all these people here in your section, um, but that's a form of segmentation, coarse-grained, admittedly, you're able to talk only within this segment and you're only able to talk within that segment. It's still a form of segmentation. Thank you guys. Now, if I put in a wall between each of the individual rows, now I'm getting finer grained. So you would only be able to talk to you within your row, but you wouldn't be able to talk to the gentleman behind you. Or I could even go down to the individual person level, right? And I can put a bubble, a cone of silence, uh, over the top of you and prevent you from communicating to anybody else in here. And then I can start writing rules that say, you know what, you are allowed to talk to him, but you're not allowed to talk to anybody else in this environment. 
So that's just a brief example of microsegmentation uh, for, for a room like this. So it's, again, it's all about restricting that lateral movement. And then once you define those rules for what is allowed to talk to what, securing and protecting those communications. So um, I've seen various statistics, but it's roughly in the order of around 75% of traffic flows east-west on a, and I put flat in, a, in quotes, because I don't mean like a single VLAN or a single subnet. What I mean is from a security perspective, it's like this room, everything's allowed to talk to everything else. Or maybe you've got some coarse grain segmentation, uh, production and development are separated, um, but fundamentally, everything is allowed to talk to everything else. And you know what? Hackers know this, right? This is exactly what they exploit. Um, yesterday, I lost count, actually, at the number of times um, uh, JP was talking about lateral movement, uh, moving across the network. She must have mentioned it five or six different times. It's exactly what hackers do. They exploit that fact that the, these networks are flat, and you've got lots of different environments, traditional data centers, software-defined data centers, um, maybe moving into the cloud, multi-cloud environments. Uh, you've got lots of things that talk to lots of other things and it's a big spaghetti mess of communication, okay? So being able to micro-segment in these types of environments is challenging. Businesses have transformed, right? You've got mobile users, you've got branch offices, you've got HQs, you've got managed, unmanaged IoT environments, uh, you're moving into the cloud. Um, so things have changed significantly, and this exposes a larger attack surface. Again, hackers know and exploit this. They know your job is hard, okay? Um, and how many times does a hacker have to be right? Once. How many times do you have to be right? Every time. There's an imbalance there, okay? And our goal is to help you fix that imbalance, all right? So if you only have to be um, concerned about securing specific assets or high-value applications, um, if you can define that, what we call protect surface, uh, to be able to um, secure, it'll make it much easier for you to be right all the time and then make the hacker's job much more difficult. All right, so just a few uh, segmentation compliance and, and recommendations that are coming from various uh, different groups. Uh, PCI, uh, if you're processing credit card data, you're familiar with that. Um, if you're involved with uh, health and patient health data, uh, High Trust. If you're in uh, the financial services industry, SWIFT, Office of the Comptroller. Um, if you're in Europe, actually, Europe just enacted legislation at the EU level that required system isolation. Uh, segmentation is an important aspect of that. And then, of course, Gartner as well is recommending this. This is in their top 10 list of things to do to help better protect and secure uh, your data center. Um, so there's lots of good ideas. Um, are there, sorry, there's lots of recommendations around this. But again, it's hard. I was just talking to a gentleman up here. They tried it a few years ago, um, and it was challenging. It was hard. Right? So what Jamin's going to talk about next is um, different approaches to doing segmentation and then some of the best practices that we've learned um, uh, over the last few years in working with our customers to help them implement uh, segmentation in their environments. Jamin? Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Brian, for wonderfully explaining why micro-segmentation is uh, way more important now than ever before. So uh, I was talking to Adam here just before, and he said uh, our industry and our, the audience, we are, we are just too serious. And this is the, probably the last session before you all go home. So I want you guys to have fun as well. So uh, not going to be uh, more serious now. But just a question. How many of you watch Game of Thrones? Ah, 50, only 50%. Raise your hands, all right. Ah, so 50, 60%. Okay. But, so it's fun. Uh, you are still in micro-segmentation sessions, so don't worry about that. Uh, the reason I ask that question is because if you know, my Game of Thrones was all about micro-segmentation in action. <laughs> and I, I, will, I will prove this by end of the session by giving you some. So the folks who have not watched it, maybe it's, uh, it's if you want to implement micro-segmentation, you can go and watch it and then get it reimbursed from your manager because he will definitely reimburse because you are going to implement a successful micro-segmentation strategy. Because my manager, Brian, is going to do that, too. <laughs> All right. So cybersecurity industry and networking we industry in together, we have uh, come up with various approaches to, doing, to do micro-segmentation, right? And these four that you are seeing here up in the slide, these are the four enforcement points, we call it, right? The first enforcement point is network fabric, right? So this is the enforcement point where you 
try to put some micro segmentation, basic micro segmentation policies in the network fabric itself and rely on the network to do some right thing, basic allow deny. Cisco ACI, Cisco's Nexus switches, Arista switches are classical examples of network fabric as an enforcement point. Right? The second one that is more emerging as part of software defined data centers is on doing some segmentation at the hypervisor level. VMware NSX, Nutanix, Flow, they are the prime examples of where you, you can leverage hypervisor as yet another enforcement point. Right? The third one is agents. You will see the solutions and products out there in the market where endpoint agents sitting in your VM or host will be leveraged to do micro-segmentation. Right? So that's the third approach. And the fourth one uh, is next-gen firewall. If you want to do some more advanced uh, micro-segmentation, that's the fourth approach. The first two, network fabric and hypervisor, these are the two enforcement points where networking and security is sort of consolidated. Right? So you are trying to do the segmentation in the network. VMware NSX, again, you are trying to do the segmentation as an error. So this is where the architecture of networking and security is sort of clubbed together. Endpoint agents is a little different, where security is completely decoupled from the network. When you are doing micro-segmentation in endpoint agents, it is, it is truly decoupled. Agents are agnostic of your underlying network, right? So that's the third. Next-gen firewall is interesting. Depending on how much of a networking you want to, you want to do in your firewall, it can fall under any bucket. It can be as coupled as network fabric or hypervisor if you are doing a lot of networking constructs and networking in the firewall, or it can be as decoupled as endpoint agent if you are just writing tag-based policies in the firewall. So it, it falls into both the buckets. So just, just so that you are, you are aware of all these four approaches and the pros and cons or different varieties of it, right? Now let's evaluate these four approaches across two dimensions. The first one is, the environment. Your applications are moving from traditional data center to software-defined data centers to public and multi-cloud. So the environment is one aspect. The second one, second dimension that we'll evaluate these four approaches against is the, the true security, right? So the first one, let's look at it. So if you have network fabric as an enforcement point, it will work fabulously fine for your traditional data centers and software-defined data centers, but you don't have Cisco switches, be it Nexus or Catalyst switches available in your AWS or Azure. So that network fabric-based enforcement point is sort of lost when your application moves to public cloud. Hypervisors, again, similar story. When you have hypervisor, it, it will work very fine in your software-defined data center environment, but not as much when you have a bare metal host or you are running some traditional data center environment. Right? In public cloud as well, when I say public cloud, it is truly virtual workload-based public cloud. Yes, public cloud vendors are now coming up with some bare metal offerings, and you can deploy some hypervisors there. But a common hypervisor-based uh, micro-segmentation will not be available in public cloud. The agents can be everywhere, right? You, the agent-based solutions, you can, uh, whether you are in traditional data centers, SDDC, or public cloud, doesn't matter because security is completely decoupled from the network. It is tied to the workload, and you can do the micro-segmentation there. Same with next-gen firewall. Next-gen firewall is available in your traditional data center, software-defined, as well as in your public cloud, right? So those two approaches are common in that environment. Now let's evaluate all the four approaches against the value of the security, right? So micro-segmentation is a little different. And the goal, so in the industry, we have come up with this various enforcement point, but the goal is always the same. Nobody is denying all the vendors across all these four categories, nobody is denying, or, or, or we have a common goal, which is identifying and preventing the lateral threats from, uh, from in, coming into the, your data center. So if it is network fabric, you will get layer two to four visibility, but you will not get layer seven visibility. So from security value perspective, you are just one third of that. You are not even half that, right? You will not be able to identify and identify known and unknown threats. Hypervisors, definitely layer three, four, and some hypervisors can do a uh, basic layer seven, so you, are, you can be there for, in terms of layer seven enforcement, but not as much on the visibility front and definitely cannot detect the threats. Right? Agents, again, they are basic layer three, layer four, cannot do anything on layer seven and cannot prevent the threats. Next-gen firewall can do it, but the point here is not that you do every, anything and everything in the next-gen firewall. You may ask that, hey, no, 
there is a value add, and I was talking to, to a customer just over the dinner, and he's here too, that hey, there is a value add in having Network Fabric or the agents or the hypervisors doing micro-segmentation in it. Because if you can simply deny the traffic from even coming to the firewall, that's a value add. So the point is not here is not that you do anything and everything in the firewall. Yes, leverage these other metrics uh, and other parameters or other uh, approaches as much as you can to simply allow deny the traffic. But you may ask the question, hey, Jamin, we, we have a mix of solutions. So how can Palo Alto Networks help us uh, with that? So what we have done is we have partnered with each of the other uh, with our, through our tech partnership. But if you are consolidating uh, or using network fabric as one of the enforcement point and can also use next gen firewall, you'll be able to achieve that complete micro segmentation and achieve the and maximize the security well. So for instance, here we have partnered with Cisco ACI and Cisco on that front where we'll be and Arista as well, where you'll be able to do some basic enforcement layer two to four in Arista fabric or Cisco fabric. And with Palo Alto's next gen firewall, you can do layer seven visibility and enforcement plus threat detection. So just be assured that from security value perspective, you'll be able to gain maximum security as long as you have mix of enforcement points in your environment. Right? All right, so let's um, shift gear a little bit. Um, five pillars of a best micro-segmentation strategy. This, these are the consolidated versions of what we learn from our customers. The first one is uh, complete visibility. The second pillar is zero trust architecture. The third one is workload tagging. Comprehensive policy and adaptive security. These are the five pillars. And we'll double click into each of them and we'll explain why these are all important. And just know that it is really as much about the process as it is about technology. So for you to be successful in the micro segmentation journey, you have to have very good process defined and we'll, have, we'll share some of the key takeaways in the end to highlight, highlight that aspect. Well, you must have complete visibility into the traffic because you cannot protect what you cannot see. So it is as simple as that. And there are various ways to gain the visibility into the traffic, right? You can use as cheap and free as panorama logs. Yesterday we had a session, uh, voice of the customers who implemented Arizona Federal Credit Union, I don't know if Brendan is here in the audience, but uh, he shared his story of how he went to complete 100% micro-segmentation with next-gen firewall uh, on his NSX environment, and he shared his journey and what he used to gain the visibility. No expensive ADMs, panorama logs exported out in an Excel, and he used Visio to just create some application map, but as basic and as free. Your environment may or may not be uh, that simple or that moderate. If it's complex, then obviously you need to use the tools, but you can use a variety of tools, right? You can use Panorama Logs, you can use Expedition, you can use uh, a Cortex app, either third party or you can build your own Cortex app. Uh, or if you have money, then you can even buy expensive those application dependency maps also, right? just to gain the visibility. The second pillar is zero trust architecture. You must have plans to go to the zero trust architecture. Now, I want to take a moment and, uh, and show you a difference between the attack surface and the protect surface. Attack surface is so large, and it is sometimes not in your control. Your applications are moving all across, so your attack surface keeps expanding with or without your control. So when you start thinking about protecting the protect surface, rather than reducing your attack surface, you'll have much greater success. And there's a blog out there, you'll be able to refer to it. There are some studies done that organizations have greater success in protecting the protect surface than just reducing and focusing on reducing the attack surface. Why? Because protect surface is knowable. You may not know today, but you will be able, you have to the tools to know it tomorrow. Plus, it is magnitude smaller than the attack surface. Right? You know your crown jewel, you know the applications that need to be protected. So it is much easier to protect the protect surface than reducing the attack surface. So that's a key insight. So first you need to first understand. So there are four elements to identifying the protect surface. The first one is the data. What data is sensitive? What applications consume sensitive information? What assets you have 
in your data center that are really sensitive to the attacks? And what services can be exploited, be it DNS, DHCP, or Active Directory? What services can be exploited for, by the attackers? So once you have this DAS, we call it DAS. It's a data application, assets, and services. These four elements constitute uh, and form a protect surface. So you first have to figure out what is this DAS is. And you can prioritize based on some of the values, the compliance requirements, and the relationship to the application owner. Whitelisting is very important. Right? Um, I know we have be all been allowing the traffic, and then we will write the rules to deny it. Instead, there's a shift in the mindset where you need to have some sort of implicit deny all, where you are really denying the traffic and then allowing only the specific ones. And here, you can leverage those enforcement points, network fabric or the agent, where you can literally deny the traffic that is unnecessary to be inspected. As part of zero trust architecture, the very first thing that you will do after identifying your protect surface is connect that protect surface to the segmentation gateway. Next gen firewall is a classical example of a segmentation gateway that you can, you can connect to. And make sure uh, you have a single policy manager to manage both segmentation rules as well as your threat rules. There is just no reason why you would manage segmentation policies differently from your threat policies. And that just adds more complications. Third pillar, workload tagging. Those days are gone when people used to write the IPs and subnet-based policies. You really want to move faster, you have to have this strategy in place to have workload tagging done in a right way. And I mentioned this earlier that it's as much about the process as it is about technology. You may not have all the workloads that are being properly tagged today, but you must come up with a process that is, that, that is very well documented and that everybody can follow, and you write your security around those tags. Right. Now, there are a number of tags that uh, you, can, uh, you can put. Typical customer that I have seen has about eight, eight or so tags, but these are the common ones. Role, application, classification, compliance, location, and environment. What is role? Role is the, is the function that a VM needs to perform. It could be your web server, application, database, et cetera. Even though nobody writes as simple as uh, that three-tier application, but I know somehow as industry, we keep referring to web at FNDV, but there is no three-tier application as simple as that. But just for the sake of simplicity here. Applications could be your SCADA, HR, sales application, classification, level one, level two, secret, compliance, different compliance requirements that Brian talked about, um, and environment. Obviously, you want to segregate dev, test, and production, and if the, you have another fourth type of environment, that's a separate. And so if you use some of this and standardize your tagging mechanism across the six or eight types of tags, you'll have much greater success. Comprehensive policy. I spent about a decade uh, uh, in networking industry, and uh, the definition of policy there, uh, before I joined Palo Alto Networks, was A can or cannot talk to B, B can or cannot talk to C. When I joined Palo Alto Networks, uh, I truly understood <laughs> the, the meaning of a true policy, right? the comprehensive policy. It's, uh, and you need to understand, it's, it's not about distributed ACL, because networking world will understand that it's about ACL, who can talk to who. It's much more than that. You have a very good security around the perimeter, but what you miss most of the time is you come up with that protect surface or a micro perimeter, but somehow you are okay with uh, much lesser security around your micro perimeter, which is really your crown jewel. And that is sometimes we are not able to understand. So just make sure that when you are coming up with your micro per perimeter, it is well secured. It is not just about layer three, layer four. Definitely don't use it. Lee Clarich, our chief product officer, outlined in his keynote that how many of you have port 80 and 443 just open, right? <laughs> and some of, some of the uh, people raise their hands, and uh, it's not what we, you should be doing. So what is comprehensive policy? It's not just about A talking to B or not talking to B. It's about who can talk to who, what, when, where, and how. Right? So these five elements will constitute the whole comprehensive policy. Well, what are the must-haves in the policies? 
if you are writing the policies in, in Panorama, you should have app ID, user ID, file-based restrictions, URL filtering, and threat prevention. I think this might be a very good feature request from a PM to another Panorama PM who can, who can give you a score when, as soon as you write the policy. You can just know, oh, how, how well is that policy? Maybe I'll raise some internal feature request for that. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, these are the must-haves in your segmentation. So micro-segmentation is way beyond just a simple allow and deny kind of ACL. It is your policy for the micro-segmentation must have these five elements. Well, you may say, Jamin, why are you talking about this? Because Just because it is in your product? No, it is not because it's in our product. It is because if the goal is unified across the industry, which is identifying and preventing the lateral threats, how can you do some of these things? How will you prevent the DNS tunneling from going across? If you just have a layer three, layer four port-based rules, DNS tunneling will, will extract all your data. You can have, how will you segment your HTTP2, where it is using the same port, but many applications inside the same port? So HTTP2. How about SSL decryption? As more and more east-west traffic is flowing through the data center, that more and more such east-west traffic is encrypted. So how will you do that SSL decryption without, without some of those policy elements? Right? And there are many more examples. Uh, and that's why it's important for you to have this comprehensive segmentation policies. Your micro-segmentation architecture also needs to have adaptive security as the fifth block. Across many of those sessions, you will, you will hear uh, we recommending dynamic address group-based policies. It's important because it's, it's tag-based and it's adaptive. New IPs are coming up or going down. You don't need to, security team doesn't need to be involved in uh, in updating those security policies in Panorama. So that's that's adaptive. The second element of this adaptive security is being able to take security actions as soon as the threat is detected. So just take a look at it. Let's say we have the threat that is inside. You can take a look at threat prevention logs, malware and phishing logs, and based on all the logs that we have in Panorama or in Firewall, you can create those granular log filtering, and you can also send the alert for C2 alerts for, for that IP address, and you can dynamically give a tag. Hey, this IP has been compromised. Let's put a compromise as a tag. And if you have dynamic address group-based policies, it will become very handy because you'll be able to have a static policy. Say anything that is tagged with as compromised, I want to enforce multi-factor authentication because how many of credential thefts are happening out there? So if you want to prevent some of those from happening, you must have this dynamic address group and the adoptive security actions where we can take some instantaneous actions right away. Well, this makes sense or this is too complex? I know Brian, Brian told me that this, I mean, remember, this is a technical breakout session, and so our customers' money won't be worth if you don't talk about uh, technical details. So I did talk about it. But if it is too complex to digest, let's have some fun. I did mention that I will prove that Game of Thrones was nothing but about micro-segmentation, and that is true. Because if you look at some of the elements, wow, Night's Watch. How many of you are familiar with Night's Watch? Yeah, it was perimeter security only, OK? It was just on the north. But you want to be a three-eyed raven. You should have a complete visibility in and out, east-west, right? So be brand or have brand <laughs> in your team. Ah, breach of the perimeter. What is not in your data center? A firewall, right? So I know we are, we are very good firewall, but breach can, be, can happen. And this is a classical example of the breach. Comprehensive policy. When you write the policy, you want to make sure everybody in the team is united and you are putting together a comprehensive policy. It's not just about allow, deny, right? It will, it will hurt me the most. You, you, you guys are our customers. You have a next-gen firewall. You have a Ferrari. And if I'm a cop and you are driving Ferrari at 20 miles per hour, I'm going to give you a ticket. So just make sure that you write a comprehensive policy. Ah, zero trust. Very important. Be the victim. This is my this is the saddest episode of, <laughs> of lifetime. Don't trust. It. I mean, sometimes I talk to the customers and they say, hey, yeah, no, and internally everything is good, but uh, you you never know. Right? So don't you don't want to be the cyber victim. Well, micro perimeters. King's landing is always protected. Right? You want you want to identify the most important assets 
and in your data center and make sure that the perimeter is equally protected. Just like King's Layer, right? It's so strong. You, you, you don't even have so many firewalls and left and right, but make sure the strength of the security around your micro perimeter is not port based, right? And finally, well, adaptive security. How many of you are using DNS sync holding feature? Ooh, this is how uh, the Night King was attracted to come to brand, and then we just killed all the threats, right? So these are some of the examples how, uh, <laughs> how you can go back and relate. So uh, if this is also a little bit difficult, this is what you want to do, right? But just a summary of five pillars. Be a 3 i driven, have a complete visibility, implement zero trust architecture, otherwise you know what happened to virus. Workload tagging, I on throne is the most important asset or the, that you want to protect. Tag it. That is your protect surface. Uh, comprehensive policy and have a dragon glass it, right, to use for adaptive security actions. Right. With that, some closing advice for success. As simple as that, you cannot protect what you cannot see, so you must have a complete visibility. Segment in phases. Don't boil the ocean. <laughs> if you try to boil the ocean, uh, uh, the, there are very, uh, the, the chances of your success on the micro-segmentation project is just a little tiny, so don't do it. Um, start with monitoring and then slowly go into the enforcement mode. Watch some of the videos out there when they are posted, Voice of the Customer by the Arizona Federal Credit Union, how he successfully implement micro-segmentation, even though it took him about nine months, three months of planning and six months of execution, but he got to 100% micro-segmentation with, uh, with next-gen firewalls. Um, just, again, there is no reason for you to have a segmentation policies and many segmentation any differently from their third policies. Because if you want to have a comprehensive policies, make sure that it is all combined and clubbed together. Never settle for layer three, layer four. I gave a Ferrari example, uh, so do remember that. Microsegmentation is one such project which can unite your organization. And we hear that from several customers who have successfully implemented it. They're saying, forget about other benefits, German, but this segmentation project brought our application team, network team, and security team together in making some planning, and it just united our teams. So this is a great chance for you to, to go for it. Next step, we have made these are some of the resources. Not all, the, the list is way bigger than this, but these are some of the key ones. Uh, f first three are the, are the uh, white papers. Do take a look at it. Um, and the fourth one is hands-on lab um, on micro-segmentation, right? Last but not the least, um, we take your feedback uh, very seriously. This is a chance for you to share what you think about the session and et cetera. And this is how we grow both personally and professionally. So please take a moment, uh, go to your Ignite app, share your thoughts around the session and, so that we can serve you better next time. 